Hello and welcome to Inside the PGTI. After the Chief Minister's Meghalaya Open in Shillong, the northeast leg of the PGTI tour continued with the staging of the 15th edition of the Indian All Servo Masters Golf Tournament. With the prize money of rupees 30 lakhs up for grabs, the golfers were looking forward to making an impact in Big Boy. You know, the Indian Oil Masters, it's quite an important tournament because it's at the end of the year and we've got four tournaments after this. So, you know, being at the fag end of the season, uh, the rankings will make a big difference. You know, you can move up or down if you miss this event. So this is a very crucial event for everybody to come out and play. You know, the pressure actually gets intense by the end uh, because everybody's trying to keep their card, everybody's trying to finish top 60. That uh, gives them a guarantee for the exemption to the next year and then also for the Russell McClure. So yes, pressure gets higher up by the end of the season. And it's not full field, so uh, well, everybody's trying to keep their card, play well. Defending champion Kunal Vaseen too was relishing the opportunity to defend his title in Big Boy. I didn't feel any pressure as defending champion. I mean, every tournament has a defending champion. So uh, I, I enjoyed it because I didn't get to defend the first two tournaments I won. So I've enjoyed being here and, and uh, trying to defend my title. And, um, you know, it, it is what it is. It's, you still have to play, you know, it's still just a tournament. It, there's no difference if you're a defending champion or if you won last week. You just have to turn up, play the tournament, play the course, um, you know, on its merit. Despite a hectic travel schedule between Shillong and Big Boy, the golfers were up to the challenge of playing two back-to-back -back tournaments. Well, uh, travelling-wise, it is strenuous. Uh, there are no direct flights. Uh, we got to change flights, uh, do a, a bit of a road trip. But uh, personally, uh, I enjoy all this. So you know, I didn't really feel the strain. Uh, um, it is a very picturesque uh, part of our country, and we are privileged to be here. Uh, I had the privilege to visit Kaziranga last week, so I am having the time of my life here. Can't complain. Actually, two tournaments uh, actually a little easier. Because one tournament you come and play here, you will come very long to come here and uh, stay one week, you will get uh, frustration a little bit. So two tournaments is okay. Dick Boy has been a permanent venue on tour because of Indian oil and everything. So players come here every year. Field uh, usually is smaller than the other events because of well distance and a lot of other issues. But it's a prominent event on tour and uh, Everyone enjoys playing here, especially now that the greens are playing so much better. And uh, <clears throat> it's a great layout, so we'll see how it goes. The picturesque golf course in Big Boy has a distinction of being the first 18 holes golf course in Assam. The course, whose length is 6309 yards, is located adjacent to the forest of the century old Big Boy oil fields and has some very unique features. There was an airstrip that was built here during World War II, which now forms part of the 5th fairway. The airstrip was converted into a helipad, which just adds to the uniqueness of the course. As do the anti-aircraft pillboxes, which still exist at the course. While at hole number 11, the remains of an oil well are located. The hole, which is 513 yards, is also the longest at the course. Since 1916, the golf course has been sole sentinel for so many events, activities. It has undergone a lot of evolution, development, changes. It saw the world war. So that is why you could see the bunkers here. You could see the anti aircraft cell there. So uh, it is unique in that sense that uh, it has undergone so many events of the past. So it, 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 it is basically historical. The natural and undulating topography ensures the golfers have to use all their skills in order to keep the ball on the fairways. However, they were looking forward to the challenge and were hoping to spot some elephants as well. What I really like about this golf course, it's uh, very natural. I mean, the layout, uh, the landscape, you don't feel as if you're in a golf course. It's, it's got a jungle look to it. I think it's uh, pretty calm and peaceful and you hear some noises, uh, birds and 
I still haven't seen elephants, but uh, I'd like to see them. Yeah, it's very unique. I mean, the surroundings are very special. We're so far east. Um, the weather's good, the surroundings, I mean, in the last few years there's been a lot more construction, but I remember in the past it was just all lush green rainforest and, um, you know, there's always the, uh, the hope of seeing an elephant um, walking around, but I haven't been lucky enough to see one yet, but um, it's very unique. Thankfully, with no elephants making an appearance, round one of the Indian Oil Servo Masters Golf was underway at the Dig Boy Golf Links. Defending champion Kunal Basin didn't replicate his outstanding form from last year, carding a round of 73. Sanjay Kumar, fresh off his win at the Chief Minister's Meghalaya Open in Shillong, took a share of third place at 3 under 69. Abhinav Lohan of the DLF Golf and Country Club Gurgaon was in second place at 4 under 68. He holed three long range birdie putts and came up with two well executed chip putts for birdies. However, it was Shankar Das, the winner at Dig Boy in 2011, who had an outstanding day to storm to the top of the leaderboard. The 30 year old set the standards with a 7 under 65 thanks to birdies on the 5th, 7th and 9th holes as well as 5 birdies in a row from the 11th to the 15th hole. Dig Boy Golf Club is a very famous club. When we play golf, we play golf. In 2010 2011, I won here. Sorry. Ah. So, after winning, the course has been very suited to us. So, it feels very good. It gives us the international players, the tournament. So, all of us have a lot of love for us. So, we have to come here to play golf. With Shankar setting the pace and Abhinav Lohan in second spot with a 68, Sanjay Kumar was joined by five other players who took a share of third place at 3 under 69. Time now for some very valuable golfing tips for all you amateurs out there from veteran golfer Sujan Singh. Hi, this is Sujan Singh. I'm a member of the PGTI and the Asian Tour. I'm here to talk to you about a few tips that can help you with your golf swing and with your round. It's basically uh, thinking about your follow through. A lot of coaches, a lot of players and most amateurs think a lot about the backswing and um, the technique of that. But um, I'm here to talk about your follow through and um, how important it is and what role it plays in the golf swings. Holding your finish, it's got nothing to do with your posture, it's got nothing to do with your backswing, it's got nothing to do with anything other than just holding your finish after each shot. It could be a long or short shot, a short it could be a putter, it could be a driver. Let me give you an example. What I see a lot of amateurs doing is they want to finish like that. They want to see where the ball goes. The weight's at the back. Uh, the head has gone all over the place. Now a lot of people would say, oh, you know, keep your head down or swing easy. And yeah, all these are good tips, but uh, they're very abstract. I think if you try and hold your finish, it gives you something tangible to uh, do and it's very easy to follow. So if I'm hitting a chip, I hold my finish. You know, anything a little longer, I hold my finish. You can keep this concept in mind for any kind of shot that you're playing on the golf course, whether it's a draw, fade, low shot, high shot, it's, it, it's irrelevant. You just hold your finish. So if I, if I try and hit a draw, and I'll hold my finish. It's a little game you can play within the game to try and hold your finish till the ball falls or till the count of three or whatever suits you. You can hit a half shot. But you hold your finish. 
Now it's got nothing to do with positions, it's got nothing to do with anything, it's just hold your finish in balance. That's all. Because a lot of people, yes, they'll say, they'll hold the finish and they'll do this. Now that's, that's not holding your finish. You have to be on your left side and you have to see where the ball is going and you have to be in complete control of your body. It's the same with the driver. It's the longest club in the bag, it goes the furthest and everyone tries to hit it even further than that. You have to use the same tempo, it's your natural tempo, it's not something, I'm not saying swing it faster, I'm not saying swing it slower, I'm saying just keep the tempo, that'll help you hold the finish. It's, it's unique to you and it's not something anyone can teach you. You try it out on the range and it's something that you will find and it's something that you can hold on to, it's like an anchoring thought. So, even if I'm hitting a driver, I keep the same tempo. The thing you'll notice is that you're gonna swing a little easier. You'll have to swing a bit easier, otherwise you're gonna be falling back. And once you start falling back, which is what most people try, most amateurs try when they, they, they want to try and hit the ball higher. And they want to look and see where the ball is gone. So that can keep the club face open, it can start closing it, but this way it's, it's a more flowing motion where you're always going forward. And because you're holding your finish, you're swinging within yourself. So your contact will improve. Yes, you may initially hit it a little shorter, but by and by, once you get a little more comfortable with your rhythm, you will gain the distance and you will not lose the accuracy. So I hope that helps. Stay tuned for all the action from round two and round three at Big Boy. We'll be back in a short while. Welcome back to Inside the PGTI. The second round of the Indian Oil Servo Masters Golf 2014 saw Karan Tonk in red hot form through the first 15 holes as he put together 7 birdies against a lone bogey. The 25 year old carded a round of 68 and a share of 3rd place at 7 under 137. Joining Karan in 3rd place was Sri Lanka's N. Tangaraja. After carding a round of 70 on day 1, the Lankan golfer came back strongly to end day two with a round of 67. Thangaraja's round of 67 was matched by Jaipur's Vishal Singh, who was placed second at 8 under 136. Vishal climbed from overnight tight third to second place with six birdies to show on his card against one bogey. It was Shankar Das Do who followed up his opening round 65 with the 3 under 69 to end the day at the top of the leaderboard. It could have been a much more commanding position for Shankar who was 5 under through the first 11 holes. But he chipped and putted poorly for bogeys on the 13th and 17th holes and also a missed birdie opportunity on the 14th. I was playing good but 13 hole के लिए थोड़ा सा मने फर्क पड़ गया बॉगी मारा उधर से लॉब हुई इसके साथ तो उधर से थोड़ा सा बॉगी लगने का बात सोचा था फिर बॉडी मारेगा ग्रीन मारा था 14 पे उधर थ्री पट किया थोड़ा सा मने गेम पे थोड़ा ये आ गया तो चेक अगेन हाउ थिंग्स शेप्ड अप इन राउंड टू विच शंकर दास एंजॉयिंग अ टू शॉट लीड ओवर � Shamim Khan, who had lost the 2011 title in Dick Boy to Shankar in a playoff, started a round of 69 to end round 2 tied 5th with Simon Yappa at 6 under. The cut fell at 3 over 147. 52 professionals made the cut. Day 3 of the Indian All Server Masters Golf in Dick Boy saw Sri Lanka's N. Thangaraja guarding a round of 70 to drop one spot to fourth place at 9 under 207. It was a disappointing round for Vishal Singh, who carded 74 to be tied sixth with C. Muniappa.
Rookie Karan Tong maintained his excellent form as his third round score of 69 took his total to 10 under 206. It was Delhi's Shamim Khan though who made the contest very interesting in Big Boy after firing an impressive 6 under 66 and a share of the lead with Shankar Das. Shankar, the two time winner at Big Boy, carded a steady 70 in round 3 with an eagle on the 7th hole and birdies on the 4th and 12th holes. However, he also dropped bogeys on the 2nd and 14th. While Shamim had a fruitful front 9 as he came up with a hat trick of birdies from the 7th through the 9th holes. The 36 year old, trailing for most part of the day, caught up with leader Shankar after a magnificent eagle 2 on the 14th and a chip in for birdie on the 17th hole. So, average wise, I am doing ball hitting and putting. So, I think that I will focus on the next day that I will focus on the next day. अपनी जो गेम है इसमें जितना बेटर कर सकूं उतना बेटर करने की कोशिश करूंगा। A look at the leaderboard confirmed it was going to go right down to the wire in Big Boy, with Shankar and Shamim ahead of him. Karan Tong would have it all to do, two shots behind the veterans. He's only 25 years old and is playing his first year as a pro, but Karan Tong has already made a huge impact. Currently leading the Emerging Player of the Year rankings, Karan has not had too much of a problem making the transition from an amateur to a pro. From amateur to pro, maybe uh, some people take a little more time to get comfortable. Actually, I, I think I have taken a few more events than I would like. I started the year alright. Uh, in between, maybe I wasn't playing that well, but uh, now I'm playing a little better. Uh, I think I don't try and think too much about about the change, just uh, believe in yourself and just play and try and have more fun. Having represented India, for Karan, the honour of representing your country was very important. Playing for your country has that, maybe you, you, want, you want to perform a little bit more, uh, you want to see your flag flying high, uh, but still I'm still, as a professional also, you still do represent your country when you go abroad. Although he missed the cut in his first pro event at Coimbatore, Karan has subsequently improved, with the highlight being a fifth place finish at the PTTI Kashmir Masters. A big factor in the successful transition from the amateur to the pro circuit is his family. My dad, my, my dad is an avid golfer. My mom also plays, and uh, my grandmother used to play. I mean, my family is full of golfers, and uh, it's not like um, I didn't go abroad for coaching. I did go ab abroad. Um, I used to work with Kel Llewellyn for quite, quite some time and uh, he helped me a lot to get to a certain level and um, I have a lot of people who have helped me through my journey. I mean, it's not like uh, it's happened in one week or one month, it's, it's taken a long time. For Karan though, making it to the Asian Tour is his next big goal. Uh, I really want to go and play the Asian Tour Q School and play well over there. And um, if I can get my card, I want to get my card on the Asian Tour as soon as possible. I want to start playing over there. That's my, that's my immediate goal would be that, I guess. To win an event and play on the Asian Tour. Um, I think that would, that would be really nice. With a calm, cool and focused young golfer like Karan realizing his potential, it seems the future of Indian golf is very bright. Coming up, it's a fight to the finish at the Dig Boy Golf Links. All the action from the last round in a short while. Welcome back to Inside the PGTI. Going into the final round at the Dig Boy Golf Links, the stage was set for an enthralling battle with Shankar Das and Shamim Khan tied in first position with youngster Karan Tonk just two shots off the lead in third place. Going into the final round and joint sixth position, 
Sri Muniappa carded 71 to end the tournament in Big Boy with 7 under 281. But Sri Lanka's N. Thangaraja carded a disappointing 75 on day 4, eventually ending the round with a total of 6282. However, it was the leader group which was providing all the gripping action on day 4. It was a tough day on the big boy golf links for Karan Tong with a double bogey on the first hole and a bogey on the second. Karan never recovered from his disastrous start, guarding a round of 79 to finish in tight 7th place. Shamim Khan too didn't get off to the best of starts, as he bogeyed the first hole after pulling his tee shot into the rough. But his main competition, two-time big boy champion Shankar Das, seemed to choke under pressure, dropping four shots on the first three holes on a windy and overcast day. Shamim made full use of Shankar's disastrous start, finding himself three shots ahead. And he then further consolidated his position with a tap in birdie on the 7th. Further birdies on the 10th and 14th holes ensured that Shamim was on track for a memorable win. With Shankar failing to recover from his disastrous start. Shamim eventually eased to a five-shot victory with a steady one under 71 to finish with a tournament total of 13 under 275. Shankar finished runner-up at 8 under 280 after returning an ordinary 4 over 76. This was Shamim's 10th title and his first in 2014. मैं कई बार यहां प्लेऑफ सेकंड आ चुका हूं और नॉर्मली अधिकतर मैं यहां इसमें अच्छा ही खेलता हूं पर यह इस बात की बड़ी खुशी है कि मैं इतने दिन के बाद टूर्नामेंट जीता हूं तो इसके लिए बहुत बहुत ज्यादा एक्साइटमेंट है कि मैं बहुत ज्यादा खुश हूं लुक एट द फाइनल लीडर बोर्ड रिफ्लेक्ट्स द डोमिनेशन ऑफ द 36 ईयर ओल्ड शमीम एज ही इवेंचुअली हैड अ कंफर्टेबल विन सी मुनियापा क्लेम थर्ड प्लेस वाइल एन थंगराजा बैक फोर्थ हाउएवर देयर वाज सम कंसोलेशन फॉर शंकर दास as he went past Rashid Khan to emerge as the leader in the Rolex rankings. That's all we have for you on this edition of Inside the PGTI. Thank you so much for watching.